Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we got here to Jubilife City where we met up with Barry as well as a rather, ahem, dashing policeman. Yeah, who didn't know what he was getting himself into by hitting on Dawn. And I don't even mean that because she's super controlling and condescending. I could imagine the penalties for that are a lot worse if you're a cop and it's your job to know the laws. But anyway, this time, we are going to be exploring Jubilife and just seeing what the big city has to offer us. I'm not expecting anything extravagant when their schoolhouse looks more like an abandoned warehouse and doesn't even have a front door on it, but we'll go in nonetheless. And for sake of convenience, we're already being stopped by somebody important looking. You call yourself a Pokemon trainer, and yet you have no Poketch. That is Pokemon Watch, or Poketch for short. I can't tell you how many people I've known thought it was pronounced Poketech. <laughs> oh my, you are a rare case indeed. You see, I invented and now manufacture Poketches. Oh, I see. So you're calling us not a real Pokemon trainer and, you know, some kind of lame loser just because we don't have this hot new item that you are trying to sell us. Marketing to 10 year olds has not changed a bit since I was that age. So he's telling us that if we can find three clowns or a bunch of jokers around the city, he will give us a free Poketch. So I think we will do that. Here is our first one. I like free things, but of course with all marketing toward kids, there's a catch. We have to answer questions that they are going to ask us about Pokemon. So Pokemon do indeed grow when defeating others and gain experience. You kind of have to not be paying any attention at all to not know that. Some Pokemon can grow in entirely different form in a process known as evolution. Kind of the main mechanic of the entire series, other than catching the Pokemon themselves, but who's counting? We'll get our first coupon, and I want to head over this way just to show that Looker has moved over here. He will stop you from going out of town. Tell me, have you not obtained a Poketch? Don't tell me they got you two. Okay, he's a police officer who's not going to let us leave town until we get this hot new item. It really is true that big business owns the world. I mean, they're controlling the police force here. This is a very bleak world we live in. Let's talk to you. So, second campaign clown. Yes, a Pokemon can hold an item. We haven't really seen this yet, but um, when Pokemon are equipped with items, they might have various effects that kick in right away. Um, berries can be eaten by Pokemon as a, oh, as a necessary during battle. Then he said as a necessity during battle, and I'm like, I'm sure competitive players would argue that, but no, it's not necessary to go into battle that you have a berry on your team, or on your team, on your Pokemon. <laughs> Let's go over this way. And there is our third clan. Since we have coupon number one and number three, I certainly hope you have number two, otherwise this is gonna be very hard to explain. Uh, just like Pokemon types, the moves also have types. Yes, they do. Pokemon's type matches the move's type. That move is made much more powerful, one and a half times to be exact. Here you go, Poketch coupon. There it is, number two. Put that into the key items, and if we go down here, you can get an item that is hidden behind this building, a potion. I gotta say, I kinda like this. You couldn't really do this on the Game Boy Advance, but they're kinda using the 3D models of the environments to their advantage by hiding things like that through perspective. Also, this tower is very visually enticing and really draws your attention to it, so I guess it's kind of another thing that they're doing. We can't go in there yet, though, but I don't know. I just think it is kinda nice how they hid items in places they couldn't really do on the GBA. It shows that, you know, the style is, I feel, is very visually enticing. It's like a pop-up book. I like it a lot. Okay, let me count your coupons. I'll use the poke at you. Wait. You can't count to three without your Poketch. I know people overuse technology for things they could quite easily figure out on their own, but that's just sad. No wonder you invented this thing. Well, that pretty pattern on the lower screen is no longer there. We now have the Poketch. Now, what I like to do is, now that you tap on the bottom screen, this happens. Hear that? What I like doing is tapping on that while the text is scrolling. Ah, dang it, okay, that was the last text box, but you get it, it's like an old game where they have text scrolling sound effects. Anyway. The Poketch, like he was saying, there has multiple apps. There are some starting apps for it, and we can get some later. I'd like to go over the ones that we start with. First off is this digital clock. There's going to be some events down the line that are time sensitive, so it's nice of them to include this, just nice and convenient for you. Um, if you tap on it, you get that nice backlight effect that digital watches of old had, kinda nice. Uh, your trainer also animates for checking their watch, which is neat. Uh, next app, we have a bit of a party checker. I strongly suspect that this app was a lot more influential than the developers ever intended. I think every Pokemon Let's Play that I have seen in recent years has something like this in the sidebar if they're not playing fourth generation, and if they are, this is usually the app of choice that they have there, so... Yeah, I kind of think that this went a lot further than they meant, because a lot of people like having this in their Pokemon videos. Um, third is a step counter. This will just kind of show how far you have gone. If you tap the C in the middle, it resets the counter to zero. This has some applications down the line, but not for right now. And 
Um, by applications, I don't mean what it is, which is an application. I mean it actually is app apply. Never mind. Next app is a calculator. It's fully functional, adds, subtracts, multiplies, divides. Um, it's surprisingly useful. If you have something that you just really want to figure out and you happen to be playing the game, it's a nice convenient thing, but it's not gonna replace your graphing calculator by any means. And the fact that you do have to scroll over to it, if you have a regular calculator with you, you're probably gonna use that. But it is kind of a nice thing nonetheless whenever there's math involved in the game. So with all that, those are all the apps that we have. But if you never played Diamond or Pearl, let me just say you should feel blessed because this watch was a piece of crap in those games. So I can scroll through the apps rapidly. You can see that there's some numbers there showing like which app channel we're on. We are missing a few actually. Um, and I have an up button and a down button. In Diamond and Pearl, there was no down button, just an up button. Meaning that with all of these apps that you can unlock for it, there's quite a few. If you scrolled past the app that you wanted by just one press of that button, you had to scroll all the way through them again in a complete cycle just to get another chance of getting the one you wanted. It was dumb. I mean, yeah, maybe it was recreating the feel of digital watches in the 90s, but that's not a good thing. There's a reason why we have touch screens now. There's a reason why technology has gone further than that. This shouldn't have been a thing that was corrected in the third version. Oh well. Anyway, uh, what I want to do now that we got our poke edge is head over this way. You can see the town map right here. There are four ways out of Jubilife City. Barry said last time that he was going to head to Orberg next, and that's where we want to head next as well, and that's over here. But there's two other ways that we can go, and I want to show what's on these routes, as they do have some nice things for us that we definitely don't want to miss. First off is this guy. Yes, sir, an old rod is a good thing. Hey, I'm not going to judge you if you're into that. You think so too, am I? Right? Um, buddy, I'm only 10 years old, but okay. Um, yes, good answer. We can be friends. Here you go. That's my old rod. Contrary to what your mind in the gutter might be thinking, this is the introduction of fishing. Wherever there is a body of water, you can fish. Um, we do not need to know how to use this thing, and when you're fishing... Okay, time out. What is it with games? And asking, hey, do you need a tutorial? And then when you say no, they give it to you anyway. Like, that's a thing that happens all too often in games. Why is that a recurring thing? It's like, it's okay if you're gonna force a tutorial on me. Just don't make it sound like I actually have a choice in the matter. I mean, ugh. Here we get an X accuracy. This is another example of an X item. We got one at the end of the last video. Um, this will up the accuracy of your moves for a single battle. It's a one-time use item. Um, this item can be really good. There's some really powerful moves that have low accuracy and that can definitely help you. Go into our bag though. You can see the old rod and our key items. If there's ever a key item that you want to use on a regular basis, just go to register and you can use it by just pressing Y. Um, oh, I'm not actually next to the water. That would kind of help, okay. Um, with the old rod, this is easily the worst fishing rod of the bunch that you can obtain. With it, no matter where you are, it will only obtain one Pokemon. And that Pokemon is... Anytime now. Oh. Not even a... N okay, let's try over here. Oh, there we go. Landed a Pokemon. You will be able to obtain with this old rod, Magikarp. Wow, level six. I think it's actually the highest it can be in this area. Magikarp is widely considered by many to be the worst Pokemon of all. It only knows Splash, an attack that does absolutely nothing. No effects, no damage, nothing, not a zip, zero, zilch. I think I just listed all the synonyms for Magikarp right there, yeah. It evolves into Gyarados at level 20, which is a very solid Pokemon. It has Intimidate for its ability, it's a water flying type, it has some pretty good attacks, but it's, it's gonna be a long road getting there. The fact that it can do absolutely nothing until level 15 means the only way to level it up would be to send it out into battle, switch over to another Pokemon, and have that Pokemon win, in which case the experience would be split between the two. It's just, you're better off waiting on this one if you want to raise it. You can catch higher level Magikarps later, and yes indeed, you can catch Gyarados as well, so it's not really a big concern um, for you to do that. That being said, however, I took it out. It's not even really that good for grinding off of. You might be thinking, oh, a harmless enemy. You know, you could easily grind off that if you have a weak Pokemon. Well, I only gained 17 experience off of that. It's got a pretty low experience yield, all things considered. Route 218, a pet is a great fishing hole that's unknow almost unknown to people. Great fishing hole. Only has Magikarp in it. Got it. Thanks, buddy. If we go over here, I believe this. Uh, yes, this is the Poke Etch Company. Just kind of wanted to stop in here really quick and talk to, um, oh, what do you have to say? Oh, Jubilife TV. Uh, sure, you could hit me up for a quick interview. Uh, which Poke, Poke, Poke Chap I use the most? The 
Pokemon list. Okay, um, I guess I've had that app pulled up for two minutes, whereas I only had the others popped up for as long as I was explaining them, so sure. Uh, comment on the Pokemon list. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun, yeah. Uh, so we can choose out of the vocabulary of words that we have heard in game so far. I'll be here a little bit. Considering what I said about Pokemon Let's Plays all using the Pokemon List app, I'm just gonna say it's very normal. Might not be the most exciting answer in the world, but I'll do that. I think it is being very truthful. Do tune in and see how you look on TV. What I really want to show over here is this guy. President of the Poke Edge Company. I'm developing a new Poke Edge app, but it's not quite done. My guess is it'll be ready when you get a gym badge. So we're gonna want to remember that for later. Uh, we're actually a family-run business, so we're not very impressive. Um, you have a gigantic, huge building in the center of, like, the biggest city in Sinnoh. What do you mean you're... Never mind. So we're gonna want to remember that guy for later. Whenever we get a gym badge, we will want to come back here and just kind of see what we can get. Uh, other than that, Jubilife Condominiums. I think I want to stop in here really quick. There are a lot of items you can get just by talking to simple NPCs, like, well, this one. Your Pokemon is quite adorable. Here, try making a hold this Quick Claw. This is our first example of a hold item, which we heard about earlier. This is helpful early on, but it is luck-based. Basically, at random, speed will be ignored, and the holder of the Quick Claw will just simply go first, regardless of what their speed stat is. Bodhi, you're not the fastest turtle on the racetrack, so I think I'm gonna give that to you. Again, it's a luck-based item, I just don't really have anything better to give him, so an item that helps him some of the time is better than an item that never helps, and that's why I gave that to him. Did you buy some heal balls at the Pokemart? No, because they are a terrible item! Heals the Pokemon it captures on the spot. That means you can catch a Pokemon and have it battle ready right away. Of course, if your team has six Pokemon in it, it won't do any good because they get transferred to the PC right away, which heals them up all the way anyway, so you barely get any chance to use it. You're a wonderful salesman telling me I should buy an item and then immediately telling me why it's so awful. <laughs> I like how Pokemon can use different attacks that makes things fun and different. Sure, if you say so. Okay, learning new moves and using them is fun. Um, for those wondering, I still haven't used Absorb in battle just because that Magikarp couldn't have damaged me and I kind of didn't want to have our first use of a new move be while I was going over a Pokemon, so that's why we did that. Now, speaking of items, let's go to the Mart. Uh, this clerk on the right, they have a Pokeball Potion, Antidote, Paralyze Heal. Yeah, this is looking very familiar. Thing is, Unlike a lot of RPGs where you get better items depending on what town you're doing shopping in where later towns have better items than earlier towns, not so here. It's determined by your progress. Depending on how far you've made it into the game, all stores, at least the right clerk's um, store, will sell the same items. So it's exactly the same as Sand Gem Town. And if you're wondering if this means no repels for at least another town... <laughs> Sorry, I just... I... I miss them. I really do. It's a big gaping hole in my bag. And no, it's not a hole that the repels are falling out through. I just don't have any. The clerk on the left, however, has some new items for you. Airmail is the part of the mail mechanic. You'd use this in multiplayer to give messages to other players. You can equip letters to your Pokemon and then trade them over to them. But I don't really have a way to show this, at least not for the time being, so I think we're going to skip over this for now. Second, though, is the heal ball. We've kind of gone over why this is one of the worst Pokeballs in existence. It's not any better at catching a Pokemon than a regular old Pokeball, and it's more expensive, but... You know... It might be a nice novelty. Whenever you catch a Pokemon, it will actually be sent out with whatever Pokeball you caught it in for its um, in-battle animations. So, I'll catch it just because it's a nice-looking Pokeball. Maybe it'll be a nice novelty down the line for something I might catch. I know that it's not really necessary for me to spend that. I might as well have just bought a Pokeball, but still. Anyway, uh, I want to go up north next to Route 204. Let's see if I can sneak past you. These trainers are going to adjust how they're looking, so I can kind of sneak past them. There are some new encounters on this route, but I think we'll go over them in just a moment. And hey, what do you know? First battle Turtwig ever did with that Quick Claw, it went before a Starly. Main reason why I want to wait a moment is that up here we have a dungeon known as the Ravaged Path. We're not able to make any real progress in here. There's just a small place that we can walk around and there's a potion that we can get. We did this, it's a rugged rock, but a Pokemon may be able to smash it. We don't have any sort of Pokemon capable of doing that, but there are two encounters that you can get here and you might not have thought to have gone up here. So I wanted to go over this because the Pokemon found in here can be quite useful. First off is Psyduck, or should I say Psyai? Duck. This can only be encountered in Platinum version. Should you have picked Chimchar, there are many rock types ahead that you're gonna need to worry about. 
The good news is, Psyduck learns Water Gun almost immediately after being caught here, so it's an excellent short-term solution to that problem. Though long-term, it's not the best option for a water type. It stays a Psyduck until a pretty darn high level, and it might struggle to keep up. Normally, this isn't such a problem in other games because Psyduck is caught so much later in other regions, but here, it's kind of an uphill battle. That being said, though, it's a decent special attacker that a Chimchar trainer might want to consider for the short term. Also in this cave is Zubat. If I could describe Zubat in one way, it would be useless. Until it gets wing attack. No, I'm serious. Once Zubat can get wing attack, it is a force to be reckoned with. It's a tough uphill battle for those first few levels, but if you can just get it to that point, it's very respectable. I like poison types more than most people do. Offensively speaking, it's one of the worst types out there. In fourth generation, it's only super effective on grass, but defense is where it really shines. It resists so many common types. Poison flying gives it three quad resistances. Fighting bug in grass gives it a nice ground immunity that would normally be a weakness if it was just a poison type. Not only that, but it's really fast. In fact, when fully evolved, it's tied for being the second fastest Pokemon in the Sinnoh decks. It's the perfect example of a super common Pokemon that a lot of people think is just weak. I mean, you fight it in the wild all the time, and yeah, who doesn't get annoyed at hearing its cry every 10 seconds whenever you're in any cave in any Pokemon game? It can get really frustrating to run into, and I can see why people would write it off thinking that it's weak because it's so common. But if you've never used one, you might want to try it out. Its playstyle is definitely different from Starly's, but if you want a flying type Pokemon in your team and you don't want to go with the bog standard Starly, it's something worth considering. And you know, I think it's underrated. I praise it in every Let's Play I do, and maybe I'll use one someday. If you haven't guessed by all my beating around the bush, or rock in this case, in this setting, that day is going to be today. Like I said, I like poison types a lot more than most people do, and Zubat is one of my favorites. I think it's time I put my money where my mouth is and use one of these dang things. I mean, this one right here is level 5. I think that's a pretty... Well, it was a pretty respectable Zubat. <laughs> okay! Um... Well, that's freaking awkward. I guess Bodhi really didn't want to spend the rest of his life with that Zubat in particular, but that's okay. The very next one I found was level 6. And I think that's actually the highest level that they can be in this area, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it. Uh, got th there, um... Maybe someday I'll actually get to use Absorb on screen in a meaningful way. Just absorbing a little bit of my health right there. I don't think I'm gonna risk attacking it again. Let's throw the heal ball. I... I'm gonna get to do something here today that not many trainers can say that they have ever done. I'm gonna use a heal ball and actually have it be useful. I don't have a team of six yet, so... Wow. This world really does not like me today. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try that again. I'm a little bit worried to attack it just because damages do have a little bit of variance to them, meaning that I could still knock it out. <laughs> so let's try that again. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank goodness, man. <laughs> I like how Bodhi also got to level 11 in this area just for me walking around trying to find a Zubat that it wouldn't mutilate. <laughs> It checks its surroundings and the location using reflections of the ultrasonic waves from its mouth. It has no footprint, even though it quite clearly has legs and feet. Well, it clearly has legs, more like. Um, I don't have any ideas for a nickname for this Zubat, so uh, you can leave a comment below, you could tag me on Twitter, you can do either of those things and suggest a nickname for this. I say this because I am the worst person ever at naming anything, really. It took me three hours to come up with the name Bodhi for my Turtwig, and I'm the kind of guy that... When he plays SimCity, he spends more time sitting there trying to name his dang town than he actually does get to play it. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, to help with the nickname, Cardinal Rule, I'm gonna go check out its nature as well as its personality characteristic to see what we got. Careful nature. That raises special defense and lowers special attack. That's certainly something. I don't really think that particularly hurts or helps me, but... I think I'll go for it. I mean, I'm not trying to get optimal natures. I kind of just take whatever life gives me, unless it's particularly bad. Like, if it were, like, minus speed on a Zubat, I probably would throw it back and try to catch something else. But I, I just kind of like to go with whatever life gives me. This is not, like, competitive battling or anything like that. So I think I will go for it. 
I also decided to look up what that impetuous and silly characteristic means, because that sounded like it would be good, and I was right. That means that Zubat's highest individual value is speed. So, yeah, I am definitely a fan of that. I'm gonna switch Zubat into the lead spot of our party just so that we can get it trained up a little bit. It's only gonna have Super Sonic and Leech Life to start off though, so it is kind of weak. However, you might have noticed that I've been avoiding trainers up to this point. You don't need to fight any of the trainers on this route whatsoever, but you might want to. If you recall, completion in this game is based on how many Pokemon you have seen in the Pokedex. Yeah, there are no required battles that will contain certain Pokemon, one of which is Badoo right here. Even though you can technically find Badoo in the wild on this route, it is a chance of finding it. And a trainer battle is not a chance, you are guaranteed to. Whenever a trainer has a non-required Pokemon on their team like this and they're in an easy to reach location, I will be making note of this just so it's easy to complete our Pokedex. That being said, however, Zubat and Badu are gonna be in quite a stalemate here for a while. Badu can't really do much in the way of damage to Zubat because it quad resists grass. And then Zubat is, well, Zubat before learning a wing attack, so it can't really do much to Badu either. So I think this would be a good time to go over the encounters on this route that I glossed over earlier. And what a better place to start than, of course, Badu. Yeah, I know we've had a lot of bios this video, so I do kind of apologize if it feels a little bit dense. It's just that I wanna go over everything and Early game, they throw a lot of different Pokemon at you so you can get a team started, and everything is new when you first start out. After this video, it's gonna be a lot less dense with bios. But anyway, Badoo. This is our first grass poison type, you know? For that being such an abundant type that they never stop making Pokemon for, I'm kinda surprised it took us this long to find one. This is a friendship evolution. Zubat has this in its evolutionary line as well, but I'm going over it here because Badoo needs it immediately to evolve. Friendship goes up by having it in your party, walking with it, leveling it up, uh, some other methods not available to us, of course, like always. Um, it goes down if you let it faint in battle, you feed it bitter items, or you trade it away, that kind of stuff. Badoo has potential to be a fantastic special attacker. This is the only time where a Pokemon, in this case Roselia, got an evolution and a pre-evolution in the same game. Its final evolution of Roserade was much needed. It is a fierce special attacker and one of the faster grass type Pokemon out there. It's also got two really good abilities. Both are great and worth considering, but I'd personally suggest Natural Cure for multiplayer and Poison Point for single player. Um, though, as great of a Pokemon as it is, you might want to pass if you're a night player. I say this because it only evolves during the day, and while you can cheat the clock in the system settings, this game penalizes you by locking daily events for 24 hours after you have changed the clock, so keep that in mind. And the last bio for this video is Wormpull. Bug type, early game, evolves super early, only knows Tackle, String Shot, and Poison Sting in its base form. It's defensive in its middle stage and it learns Harden. You know the drill. It's incredibly powerful early on due to its stats skyrocketing from evolving so quickly, but it might fall behind later on. The only difference is that it evolves at random into Silcoon, which becomes a Bug Flying type, or Cascoon, which becomes a Bug Poison type. It's unique in being the only Pokemon with a branched evolution that evolves even further, which is... cool, I guess? And before this comes up, no, it doesn't evolve based on gender. It's random. Trust me, I have a history with this. It's determined by a bite of personality value that has nothing to do with gender. Time doesn't influence it either. Lots of pauses for emphasis in this bio. Also, its shiny form is pretty great. Purple Wurmple, it rhymes. <laughs> also, I hope that if you've been looking at the video feed up in the corner this whole time, you can see how painful it is raising a Zubat at first. Like I said, it is trouble. It'll be worth it in time, but this should really illustrate just how annoying it can be to raise at first. Anyway, going back to Jubilife, this guy is technically a trainer of interest, but not so much. I'll beat you with the magic heart my dad gave me! Kid, your father never loved you. Okay, no, sorry, that's the only thing I can ever think of when I see that line. That is so funny! <laughs> Anyway, he has a Magikarp. It's a 100% encounter rate if you use the old rod. Technically missable, but who really cares? Be thankful I didn't make you watch that fight. That was quite possibly the dullest battle in Pokemon history. Zubat ran out of Leech Lives, so I had to just sit there and wait for the Magikarp to slap itself in the face in confusion over and over again until it went down. 
That was definitely something, and I did not want to fight you. Um, yeah, if there is a trainer that changes their direction, if you are running, they will automatically turn and face you. So there are legitimate advantages to walking. You'll also run into less Pokemon in the grass, so that is worth mentioning. Uh, you have a Shinx. I believe that's not a missable Pokemon, so no big deal here. Really didn't want to fight you, but that's all just as well. We got some more experience from that. Now, I want to head over this way and get an item through here. Got a Paralyze Heal. We have yet to see Paralysis, and I think it'll be quite some time before we do, but hey, can't help to future-proof. Oh. Now, heading back into town. Last time I said that I was going to wait to fight the trainers that were in the um, Pokemon Trainer School Academy... Um, Something or other. Okay, I don't remember the exact name right now, even though Dawn is like, hey, it's all in the name and easy to remember. I feel kind of ashamed now because I'm usually such a stickler for official names. But point is, there's some trainer battles in there that you can do. And I was waiting until I would catch Zubat because, well, those kids look like easy experience. Anyway, I'll be right back from taking care of those. Only thing worth mentioning is that the boy uses X attacks in his battle and the girl uses X defense. Doing it is the best way to learn. After beating her, she says to talk to her friend to get a nice item. Uh, is that you, or is she talking about this kid? Oh, okay, never mind, I was overcomplicating things. We can get a potion from him, so another item that you can get here in Jubilife City. I believe that's all the things of note, though. Um, yes, Superior Trainer knows how to use items to their full advantage, and by that you mean just being a cheating jerk that spams items in order to win battles, yeah. I'm gonna go heal up at the Pokemon Center real quick. And with all of that done, it's time for us to move on to bigger and better things. Well, okay, we won't be bigger and better because this is kind of the hub town and the biggest city in Sinnoh, but still. We can now go out of town. Looker is no longer blocking the road, so let's go. Of course, though, gotta be somebody new blocking it. Hey, Emil, you can tell me you got a little tougher. Um, I would tell you, but I'm silent. Me? Do you need to ask? Of course I got tougher. Come on, I'll demonstrate it to you. Here we go, second rival battle, and this is the main reason why I wanted to catch a second Pokemon for the team. He's got two himself, and yeah, it can be a little tough. He starts off with a Starly, level seven, normal flying type, with the moves Growl and Quick Attack. It luckily doesn't have any flying type moves, so I won't have to worry about Turtwig here, but still, Starly can do a lot of damage. I wanted to use, I want to use Zubat here starting off so that I can use Confuse, uh, use Confusion. Use Supersonic to confuse it. If it hurts itself, which it did, it'll do a fair amount of damage. Unfortunately, though, it resists Zubat's only attacking move, so I think it's time that I switch over to Bodhi. If you can hit yourself a Confusion a second time, that'd be really useful. Come on, Starly. I know you can do it. Good. Okay, so you didn't shake off your Confusion. Good. Okay. Already down to half health. Wow. Uh, maybe someday I'll find a meaningful time to use Absorb in battle. I still have not found a good application to use it. I mean... Wow. Um, oh, come on, Bodhi. Don't miss at a time like, oh, I was faster than, we had a speed tie, didn't we? Because it went first, and then I went first, and I didn't get the animation for Quick Claw, so, interesting. Okay. Barry is going to send out Chimchar next, this big, scary Chimchar. Ugh, I have been afraid of this thing, but, okay, it's not as bad as it could be. His starter is level nine, but despite the fact that it should get a new attacking move at level nine, like Turtwig learned Absorb, it has the same moves as the first time you battled it, so you don't have to worry about that at all. It's just gonna use Scratch as its primary attacking move. It's kinda odd. All of the starter Pokemon are like this, so no matter what you picked, it'll have the same moves as the first time you battled it. I remember being very confused about this on my first playthrough, kinda thinking like, wow, I'm really lucky that he's not using his good attack on me, but wasn't the case. And this is getting scary. Come on, please hit with the supersonic. I don't want Zubat to faint. Both so that I have a fail safe if Turtwig can't handle it, but also because Zubat is our first example of a happiness evolution. Happiness goes down if a Pokemon faints in battle, so I want Zubat to not faint at all costs. If it comes down to one Pokemon having to faint, I would kind of rather it be my Bodhi just for a long-term benefit. That sounds really horrific and like I am a terrible owner if that is the case, but it is kind of true that it will have more long-term benefit for me if somebody has to faint for it to be Bodhi. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize I was making a pun there until I was opening my mouth to say buddy. Let's just take out Chimchar. Don't get cocky, this isn't over yet. I, come on, hit yourself please, hit yourself, good. Doing a lot of damage because Chimchar's attack set is so good. One more hit and it should be done. My Pokemon's getting low HP. Things could be tight here. 
There's that quick. <laughs> so once again, Barry never attacks me with his Chimchar. You'd think after how things ended for him last time, he would have actually, I don't know, learned from that mistake, but... Okay, level 12 on Bodhi. What just happened? I lost? Wow, maybe he did actually learn something. He didn't say we lost when he lost. Getting better at some things, just not the actual fighting part of it. Wow, what do you mean I lost? Well, that's it. That's the last time I'll ever lose. I'm going to be the world's toughest trainer, and you know it. First thing I'll do is take on the Orberg City Pokemon Gym. I'm going to toughen up for that. Totally. There he goes. Well, Looker is no longer blocking the path. Barry is no longer blocking the path. Third time is the charm. Should be smooth sailing from here. We got ourselves our second Pokemon. Did everything there was to do in Jubilife City. And yeah, made a lot of progress in general. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we hit the road to Orberg City and challenge our first Pokemon gym when we get there. See you guys then.